Provo Beast here doing another install today. Videos. We're going to go ahead and show you how to remove the door panel, replace the speaker in a 2007 to 2011 Nissan Versa. It's the first generation series. Now you can always do a mid-range woofer and tweeter or a coaxial, meaning the tweeter is mounted on the speaker itself. In this case though, We've actually done a custom mount for tweeters up here in the eight pillars. Kind of show you how we did that, how we put in the woofers, how to wire everything, where the crossovers are, all included here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this door panel off to get started. All right. So as you notice, with a panel popper tool, this outside trim ring is the first thing to come off. Now there's gonna be two clips, top and bottom, that really just hug the top and bottom portions. You just kind of work on getting those clips unhooked from those little interior tabs. And this whole piece just slides on off. Now what this allows us to do is to slide this whole piece over the door handle. So we're good here. We'll remove that Phillips screw and go ahead and work on this crank. Now, there we are, right there. And it's gonna be the same on the other side as well. It's a U-shaped pin that goes around the whole crank. You push that pin down on both sides, releasing the crank itself off the shaft to the window. So I'll see if I can get this off. Oh, there it goes. You just pop the pin. Oh, out of focus, sorry. See that? So this pin was up right there around the crank. When you pop that pin off, it allows the crank to come free. And this is a little cover, but see this little interior groove? That's where the pin was around, which holds the crank on. So the crank has actual grooves. There we go, so you pull that off. Pull this guy off, pull the screw out, we're ready to use a panel tool, which we have here, and we're going to pop these clips all the way around the store panel off for you. Alright, there we go. Got the door panel all off. As you can see, it's already been replaced. I put in this uh, six and a half Alpine Type S mid-range woofer. Again, Twitter's up in the A-pillar. Um, nice thing is, these Alpines come with a speaker ring bracket or adapter, allowing you to use the factory mounting screws. Now, if you don't have these, they're pretty generic. You can pick them up on Amazon or Critchfield, but this allowed me to actually bolt it directly into the, uh, the factory threading. So, all right, as you get this door panel off, you'll see the factory one here. Um, again, this one's replaced, but um, you'll go ahead and remove these 10 millimeter screws. From there, uh, you'd be able to unhook the factory wiring harness and I'll show you from that point. Okay, so I've got the, the woofer out and for you, you would just see a harness that plugs into the back of the speaker itself, the factory speaker. You'll undo that. Um, typically, it right here, this line comes in and since I've, I've already cut the line, this is where the harness would be because that really just plugs into the speaker. Unplug it. Um, and then you'll have these uh, wiring colors here. Now what you've seen me do here is this mid-range woofer, um, as you can see, has actually two sets plugged in. And the reason behind it is this is the main harness that comes in from the radio. Comes up here, and I've cut off the factory harness. The lighter color here is the, the negative and the pink color here is the positive. And I've just used these crimp caps and hooked them on. And the speaker wire is what came with our Alpine. So I didn't have to buy that separately. I attached that together, ran that down and back inside the door panel so it comes out here and it plugs directly in. Now the secondary set of plugs here actually are outputs that go to our tweeter. And what I did is I extend those wires and see if I can get a good shot. I go right through the factory 
rubber tubing. It may be a little dark for you, but I can get that pulled off. Essentially, I came into the car. This panel comes off, and I'll take that for you. And that wire works its way all the way up to our tweeter. Now, one thing with these tweeters, they have inline crossovers. They don't actually have a crossover box. So I'll show you how I mounted those cross inline crossovers inside this panel here. But that's how I hooked that all up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the speaker back in here. Um, basically, when you get your woofer back in the door, whether it's a coaxial or a component set like I have here, um, it'll be very, very similar. Now, you don't have to run separate tweeters, but I chose to do so for the sound quality and clarity. Um, I can hear those high range frequencies a lot better when they're up higher. Um, you can really, if you had a coaxial or a full range with the, the speaker with the actual tweeter built on itself, you can stop here, put the panel back together and be good to go. I actually ended up, since I wanted the tweeter up here versus in the door itself, that's why I went ahead and ran wiring through the tubing up to the A-pillar. So but going forward here, let's go ahead and get the speaker put back in. Since it's all been wired here, um, we'll get the door panel back on. Then we'll show you the side of the car, how I ran the tweeter wiring, crossover, and mounted the tweeter in the actual A-pillar itself. Okay, so I just kind of get barely seated there. And I'm going to put that right there using pliers. And then as soon as I get it on, I'm going to push that all the way forward to lock it over the crank. All right, there you go. So we, let's kind of pick up where we left off on the tweeter wiring. So the tweeter is connected into the woofer, as you saw in our previous segments. Ran the wire through the factory rubber tubing. And as you can see, it comes out right there. And now this is just extra wiring that I had. You may need more speaker wire. You can use really any kind you like. Just make sure it's a, a decent gauge size. And it goes right up there. Now this panel here just comes off. With a, it's just all clips here giving you access now there is this long black piece this is our Twitter crossover it's the inline crossover is talking about but basically as you can see that wire comes up here goes into the crossover and I chose this location because it was just a good mounting place for it so they don't rattle around and inside here we have this panel, and you just go ahead and pull this back. You'll notice this is my Bluetooth mic. Don't worry about that black cable here. Get up and underneath. Get just all held on with clips. You get your hands behind it. Just be careful so you don't break anything. We'll pull this back. What I did, so after we ran the crossover here, I ran the wire so it comes out at that point. And there we are. That's how I ran the wiring for the, the, the actual tweeter itself. Now, the reason I also chose this location is sometimes, depending on your trim level of your Versa, the factory tweeter is in this location as well. So there is plenty of space in this A-pillar, this little junction here on the A-pillar to, to mount a tweeter. That's why I also chose that location. These tweeters, the way that they mount, you drill the hole, I can give you a it's a it's a two inch hole, but you drill the hole and then stick the tweeter through, and then uh, that's like a little. I would say it's a, kind of a large nut that fits around the tweeter that tightens it down, and that's how I put that in there. All right, so once you get yours in, go ahead and just kind of work it back on here. Make sure it all clips okay, just like that. Make sure it's seated. Sure that seats just like that. Should pop right back on. Okay, so that's how you do a component set and a Nissan Versa in the front door. 
again, you can still do a coaxial set or a full range speaker right there and not even worry about this portion of the video. Regardless of what you do, this should be a good step-by-step -step tutorial. If you have any questions about what we've done here, just go ahead and post a comment below. This was a 2010, but this fits a 2007 through 2011 Nissan Versa. Thanks for watching the channel, and uh, go ahead and check out my rear speaker replacement if you choose to, to do those pair of speakers as well. Thanks for watching. All right, here's a little test. Everything's back together.